I said before that calculus makes models by looking at changes and, um, and we're going to look at that more specifically and introduce a calculus technique in an approximate way that we'll be able to do better with calculus. So here's a situation. You've got some graph of some function y equals f of x and it may be active, it may be passive, you may have a formula, the formula may be complicated, but you know one value, so we'll just call that uh, the x value a, and so the y value is f of a. So that's the one value that you know, and the thing to notice is that the tangent line, the line that just touches, um, is very, very close to the graph for um, a while. So if the change in x is not very big, you can hardly see the difference between the green tangent line and the black graph. So that's the tangent line. And the interesting question is, what's the slope? Now I'm going to look at this one and I'm going to eyeball it. This is what we were taught to do when I was in high school. You just eyeballed it. And, uh, or else if you had something on a grid, you could use grid points to measure it. I'm, I'm going to say this slope is about 1. So the equation of the tangent line is, uh, we just use point slope form because that's always the best form for calculus anyway, uh, y minus f of a is equal to m times x minus a. So m is the slope. Uh, y minus f of a is the, this is the equation of the tangent line. So y minus f of a is the change in y. And x minus a is the change in x. So I'm going to give those the standard names, delta y and delta x. And the new ingredient here is knowing what the slope is. So, um, so what we see is that um, um, if we have a good guess for the slope, a little change in x is going to lead to a rise over run change in y. This is called the tangent line approximation. It's one of the most fundamental things in the world of computing, period. This is more important than kittens. So um, this should remind you of something. If I um, uh, rearrange this equation I just had, I'm saying m is approximately a fraction. Remember, do the parentheses first. So the top of this fraction is um, y minus f of a, and the bottom is x minus a, and that's something you've seen before. That is the um, average rate of change. So this is all getting tied up with rates of change and secants and the like. And tangent is kind of a special secant. Uh, I'll get fired if you tell anybody I said that, but it's a special secant. So. Um, so, so there is the situation. So let me remind you that's the average rate of change. There's another way to write this which can be very um, helpful and it will be more helpful in, uh, in doing calculus. If we let the uh, change in x be denoted by h, uh, where'd they come up with h? For horizontal. h for horizontal. And so um, so what you're going to see here is a fraction. This is, again, right in the average rate of change. Um, F at, and what we're going to do is slide things over. So um, x plus h minus f of x. That's the top of the fraction. The bottom is h. That the, These two are the same formula, just with different notation, where h is delta x. So this is the difference quotient you learned about in pre-calculus. We're going to be hitting on this a lot for right now. Anyway, we're not ready for it yet, so we're not going to start hitting on it yet. But let me show you something that is a very useful um, approximation. This is genuine calculus thinking, even though we don't have the precision that we would like. So I am going to draw the graph of y is equal to the natural log of x. Now, you know after a while natural log grows very slowly, you can estimate it with uh, log base 10. Natural log, I'm sorry, log base 10 of a million is 6. Log base 10 of a billion is 9. Log base 10 of 10 to the 20th is just 20th. It 
hardly grows at all. Um, and we know one point on this, so we're going to be in the situation that we were just in. We know the point 1, 0, because 0 is the natural log of 1. What's the exponent to get 1? Oh, you raise something to the 0 power. So we're going to do this, and um, this drawing is not to scale, so you may have some objections, but this works out pretty well. I'm going to sketch in a tangent line. Tangents seem to be green today. So I've sketched in the tangent line, and there it is. And um, I'm sorry, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, prior knowledge here and say if I had drawn this really to scale, which isn't that hard to do, um, I would say that tangent line has slope about 1. We will learn, in fact, that that tangent line has slope 1, but we have to develop some techniques to do it. So the tangent line has slope 1. I'll write m equals 1 for the slope. And now we get the equation of the tangent line, which is, don't simplify anything, don't simplify anything, y minus 0 is equal to 1 times x minus 1. There are two ways that you can mess yourself up when you're writing this down. Uh, you can simplify and say, well, y minus 0, that's just y. That's the same number, but it's a different pattern. The same thing here. 1 times something, well, it's just the thing. Why bother to write the 1 times? That is the pattern. The pattern is the slope, and we're, I've said the slope is about 1, so we're going to do that. And so we're going, what we're saying here is because the tangent line is close to the graph, what we're saying is that the natural log of x is approximately x minus 1 if x is small. And um, call me Ishmael, I spelled that wrong. So um, we can check this out. I'm just going to show you some calculator stuff. And, um, and so if we look at 1.03, uh, 1.03, there we go. So I'm going to put 1.03 into a calculator. The difference is 0.03. That's the change in x. So x minus 1 is 0.03. And if I take the natural log of that, whoa, it comes out to be uh, 0.03. So this tangent line approximation is very good at telling us um, what goes on near a point. It only happens near the point that you know, but it can be very useful and it's one of the most frequently used tools in, um, in applying mathematics. We're going to use it over and over again this semester, but um, the world has used it 400 quadrillion times in the time it took me to make this video. So tangent line, use the point-slope form, Right now, we can take a guess at the slope. Later on, we'll learn how to get it exactly. And you can approximate difficult to calculate things very uh, accurately, if, as long as the change in x is small. Change in x, change in y. Have a good weekend.